So I've seen a lot of videos online of people using these exact ones. Um, this is like a space heater made for, you know, heating your desk or whatever. So I've seen people use this in their trailers, which is really nice. But um, I want to test out the theory that these will actually work because I'm running a 2000 watt um, power bank here. So I want to see if, since this will be able to power it for a long time, I want to see if this is even feasible. Now, the reason I went with this one is because it does have a little button under here that if it falls over, it'll shut off. Because really the idea of a space heater inside of a tent is kind of scary to me. I trust this one and I use this at home all the time. So um, we'll see if I can heat up an entire tent with it. So it looks like this one here maxed out at about 650 or so watts. So if we're getting these kind of numbers here from this, then there's just no way that even this massive power bank right here is gonna be able to run this for very long. So now that we switched to this one, you know, this is a lot smaller, but the draw is still about 160 watts, which is, um, you know, not crazy high, but if you have a 2000 watt power bank and you're running it at 160 watts, that's actually, you know, 11 hours of power. So this could be feasible running this on high. But if I wanna run this mostly on low, um, just to be safe, because I do wanna use this to power other things while I'm camping. So basically we're using one of the higher end and highest wattage power banks that I could find with one of the lowest wattage draw space heaters. So I started off by trying to preheat the tent with the heater, uh, started at like nine o'clock. Then at 1130, I hopped in bed. Um, sadly, the tent was not really preheated. I mean, it was maybe a little warmer than it was outside, but um, it seems like, yeah, really just kind of heated what was in front of it. So at this point, I had switched it from high to low because with other heaters I have, um, I noticed that when I'm going to sleep, it gets really hot in there, but that really wasn't exactly the case with this one. So maybe I should have left it on high. This last clip here is, I believe like three o'clock in the morning. I felt pretty warm because I kind of had it aimed at my face, but the rest of the tent was not. So after testing this last night, I'm gonna go the Mythbusters route and do a plausible because while I don't think it really heated the space too great, it does heat pretty much everything in this wide area pretty good. But I ran it on low and then put it on high this morning. It depleted my 2000 watt power bank and uh, I would expect that most people probably don't have 2000 watts with them. So I think for 99% of people, this is not really a viable option. If you had a trailer and you um, had enclosed walls and the heat couldn't escape, then maybe you could use this for a few hours and then uh, you know shut it off. But running it all night in a tent, I, I, I don't really see that being a, uh, a super effective method. I am going to say this is plausible, but I would not recommend it. And it would definitely not be my first method for heating my tent. The best way I can describe it is if we have this buddy heater, when the heat comes out, it comes out kind of like this. So if you're within that section, you're a little bit too warm. So it actually fills up the entire tent. Whereas with this one, if you're within kind of the diamond, you are warm, but outside of it, you're not. So typically this is more what you would want because you would want to be maybe, you know, avoid this triangle and be warm outside of it. Whereas you have to be directly in front of this one to be warm. So while I do think that this could be a feasible option, the conditions that would make this feasible would have to be pretty much perfect. You would have to have the 250 watt and you'd have to have a really high end 2000 watt power bank, which I do have, but I don't think everybody has. So while I am calling this plausible, I would say for most people, this is going to be a pretty much a myth busted. In almost every other way, the diesel heater or the buddy heater is going to be superior to this. Now, if you have a teardrop 
or a trailer or something like that that is going to be enclosed, this might actually be pretty feasible. The rooftop tent is gonna be made of, you know, like a canvas or some type of similar material. So the heat from this is gonna be able to escape pretty easily. So I will have more heater videos coming up. I have a diesel heater now and um, I have a buddy heater and I have a video with all three of those. I don't think I'll be including this one, but um, I don't know, we'll see. What do you guys think? Let me know below. Also, you can check out this video or this one.